In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. And that was Donald Trump back in the 2016 presidential campaign against Hillary Clinton. Several of Trump's statements about classified information and the rule of law are noted in his recent federal criminal indictment. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. By now, you've probably heard about the 37 criminal counts in the classified documents case. Many of you, like me, have read the indictment. Well, I've been reading federal criminal indictments for more than 30 years. In my career, I've covered countless federal criminal investigations ranging from Iran-Contra to Whitewater to the CIA leak case. I've read indictments produced by special counsels, including Lawrence Walsh, Robert Fisk, Ken Starr, and Patrick Fitzgerald. So I want to offer my own perspective, and that is, in all of these years, I have never seen an indictment as compelling, strong, and airtight as this one Jack Smith has brought against Donald Trump. And here's why. All of the evidence, all of it, comes from Donald Trump himself, his lawyers, and his own staff. There's not a single witness one would normally consider adversarial to the defendants. In this case, against a Republican, there's not a single Democrat. Also, every charge stems from actions Trump took after the grand jury began its investigation. Every count is about documents Trump continued to hide and hold on to after the grand jury began requesting the materials. When Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, and Mike Pence were found to have taken materials they should have turned over, the materials were then turned over. In Hillary Clinton's case, she and lawyer Cheryl Mills separated and deleted personal emails involving Chelsea Clinton's wedding, but Clinton emails related to classified information were maintained and given to the FBI. Donald Trump, as his indictment makes clear, repeatedly hid materials and refused to turn them over. If Trump had given up all the materials once the grand jury began its work, he would not be facing any of the charges in this indictment. Now, there's another thing that jumps out in all of this, and that is the severity of the potential damage Donald Trump may have caused. In many indictments, a defendant is accused of stealing money, say by defrauding the IRS or misleading financial institutions, or the defendant is accused of lying to a grand jury about somebody or something. The victims of the alleged crimes are the rule of law and a government institution or entity like the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or the Internal Revenue Service. The victims in this Trump case are the rule of law and U.S. national security. All of it. All of us. Indictment page two, number three, quote, the classified documents Trump stored in his boxes, including information regarding defense and weapons capabilities of both the United States and foreign countries, United States nuclear programs, potential vulnerabilities of the United States and its allies to military attack, and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack. These are the U.S. national security crown jewels. Maintaining their value keeps us safe and helps us to deter other nuclear powers or terrorists who may dream of annihilating us. But these documents were stolen, kept, and hidden away near the Mar-a-Lago swimming pool and in a storage closet and in a bathroom and shower next to a toilet. And Mar-a-Lago has had countless events over the past two years with literally tens of thousands of guests. U.S. national security analysts are certain that Russian spies or Chinese or North Korean almost certainly infiltrated these events and surreptitiously looked around Mar-a-Lago even before the document controversy went public. So the damage from Trump's actions may be even worse than we can imagine. And now we have to imagine that a U.S. enemy could be more tempted than ever to launch a nuclear first strike against the United States given the knowledge of U.S. vulnerabilities. This isn't trading arms for hostages, or stealing from a savings and loan, or outing a CIA agent. This is about America's nuclear arsenal, the greatest deterrent we have against our enemies. And Donald Trump compromised it. The indictment doesn't say why Donald Trump did what he did. Was it ego? Hubris? A love of trophies? A business plan? Some of this may come out at trial, though a trial could get delayed by pretrial decisions from the judge randomly selected, who happens to be a Trump appointee. She could rule that attorney-client privilege was unfairly pierced and kick that issue or countless other issues up to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. I have no doubt the appellate courts will eventually fully support the indictment charges, but it could be years before this federal district criminal trial actually goes in front of a jury. But if it ever does, mark my words, Donald Trump will be convicted the indictment is as strong and powerful as you will ever see. The crimes are as outrageous as you will ever hear. And the damage is unprecedented and incalculable. 
In this case, at trial, there would be no escape for Donald Trump. And even though all defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, the law in this indictment is clear. The evidence is overwhelming. And it all comes from Donald Trump himself and the lawyers who are trying to protect him. A conviction would not be a close call. If you want to read the indictment yourself, please do so. Just click on the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.